Welcome back to our second video in the series of tips from 12 full-time RVers. That's right. We hope you're getting a lot of information from this series. We had a great time getting together with everyone, asking them the questions. And what I really love the most about it is everyone had a, a different answers. Yeah, that's the fun part about it. You you could ask 100 people and you're going to come out with 100 different answers. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. So even though we're all for full timing, we all may do things a little bit differently or have a little bit of a different idea on how to full time because there are many different ways to full time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And the, the way we're doing it may not suit others needs as well. So this is kind of cool. Yeah, it is interesting. All right. So the question today is, what do you do for income? <laughs> oh, hmm. I'm Stacy. And I'm Thomas. And we're I'm Not Lost in RVing. We are currently RVing in a 2014 Itasca Viva 23 rear bath. Yep, we started out in a 30 foot travel trailer in June of 2017, and then we went full time June of 2018. And we've recently got this Viva about three weeks ago. Yep, and we're loving it so far. So what do we do for income? We get this a lot because we're in our 30s, our early 30s at that. And uh, the answer is we were both in law enforcement prior and basically after an 18 month long career. <laughs> <laughs> I was injured in the line of duty. Yes. So they ultimately medically retired me for that injury and um, my pension's 14.50 a month. So we get that and that covers the basic bills, you know, our RV insurance, food, gas, those sort of things. That's not enough to cover any extras like no, so, you know, going to a museum or something like that. Yeah, we have no budget. We have no money in our budget for staying places. So we try to um, you work know, driveway or surf free. or work camp or boondockers welcome, whatever it may be to live for free. And as far as uh, income, basically what we do now is we have our own YouTube channel and that's how we make our income. It took a long time to get there and we definitely don't make a lot of money, but it's enough to get us by and we are more than, yeah. it's crazy how, uh, how things work out. It's been awesome so far. Yeah. So. so our YouTube channel so far, we have almost 12,000 subscribers and it's taken us 18 months to build up to that. Commercials alone, we're only making about four or 500 bucks on commercials. So that's going to give you guys an idea. If you do want to start a channel, it's not something that happens overnight. It does take a lot of effort. It took us six months to make our first $100. Yes. It took three months to make $18. So um, and when you realize how many hours and how many videos you put out in that time frame is is way less than minimum wage. I could have went and worked at McDonald's <laughs> and made more yeah. money. But the but payoff, yeah, the payoff, the people we've met, we've really enjoyed the networking, that along the, way. the potential, and the people is what has made it worth it. So, for income, we're both retired military and disabled veterans, so we get a pension from the Department of Defense, and we also get um, some disability pay from the VA. Uh, we also get money from our website, doing affiliate income, our books, how else? Also um, from our partnerships with other people, with those businesses, like uh, I'm in blogging camp, Sean has a podcast, and for the first three years that we were on the road, I actually worked full time remotely, a regular nine to five job. It was after we had saved up enough money and our blog had started making enough money for me to quit that job. But Sean, instead of fully quitting, just reduced his hours. So he still consults, what, maybe 20 hours a week? Maybe 10 now. I haven't told her yet, but maybe 10 hours a week. <laughs> I actually have uh, had two careers. I did a 26 years with the Marine Corps. So I retired from the Marine Corps. So I have a military retirement. We're blessed with that. And I also worked for 11 years uh, flying as a pilot, uh, both teaching role and a, a line pilot role and uh, we were able to save up some money to help pad this lifestyle so uh, and we're uh, reaching Social Security so we'll be using that as well so it's a combination of streams of income uh, and that's probably good advice for anybody is don't rely on just one stream of income get as many different streams you can uh, to, so you can be comfortable in this lifestyle for our income we uh, live on our retirement and, and now we're on Social Security it's, it's part, part, of of our, it. part of our income. So for income on the road, I have a full-time job. Like we mentioned, uh, I have telecommuted for the last eight years at my job, so it was a pretty easy transition for me. Uh, the biggest hurdle was full-time internet. Uh, we got a video on that. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> but it is, it, that was the biggest hurdle, was making sure we have connectivity, because connectivity is key. 
So I work, I'm a programmer. Um, I work for a large company that allows me to telecommute. Tara now does all of our editing. Yeah, I used to be in sales and then I got sick and all of that went away. I lost all my ability to really be able to, to handle any kind of full-time job at all. Um, I found that I really enjoy editing the videos, so that's been great. That's been great for my brain and uh, for my just my general well-being to actually feel productive. Um, and I and I like it, but I can do that at my on my own schedule at my own pace. What we do for income is I'm self-employed, not just I'm continuing my same um, employment. I'm a structural draftsman, a structural detailer, which is basically I build 3D models of steel buildings and prepare shop drawings for people to be able to build from. It's kind of boring, but that's what I did. I've been doing it for 30 years and I'm still able to do it as long as I have internet connection, um, a decent internet connection. Yeah. And he makes the money. <laughs> and we're, we're I did work, but I, yeah, I, I quit my job um, <clears throat> to go on the road. So right now he's the only one working, but um, I'm going to explore other options, mm -hmm. something that I'm passionate about and something that um, really interests me and I'm just going to wait until I find that. All right, so what we do for income really, or I should say what I do, is nothing. <laughs> what yeah. Bill does... She's a mooch off me, that's what she does. <laughs> no, really, in all seriousness, we right now have my military retirement um, that we are currently living off of while we're full-timing. Because? Because I'm in between jobs right now, in between contract jobs. Right. So, and with the government shutdown right now, there's no telling when that'll get picked back up. Yeah. So, Phil also is a remote Navy contractor. Right. So, he actually was doing that whenever we went full-time, and that job is what made us realize that we could actually go full-time. So, of course, two months after we went full-time, that contract ended, and yeah. we are anxiously awaiting the next one. But we knew that was coming, so we, we were prepared for it. But yeah. it still gave us the green light to go ahead and, and fulfill our dream of hitting the road full-time. Right. Unfortunately, my job did not convey very well, but I do have many options um, with my degree, of course. Right. Right. Um, but to be honest, I haven't really made any effort. <laughs> She's kind of loving doing this full-time yeah. gig without any major responsibilities, which is kind of cool. Well, we both kind of yeah, are. It's, really, it's totally different than what I've done my whole life, yeah. which is, you know, work anywhere from 40, 60 hours a week, nose to the grindstone. Um, I'm sure many of you guys are doing this right now so you understand where I'm coming from. It's been really nice not to have that hour commute to work and another hour home from work. We have some padding, so we're not really worried about that. So the, the next job will come. Yeah, we just had to tailor our lifestyle just a little bit um, so that we didn't go you know, hog wild and yeah. spending and, and eating out and doing those things. But we've managed to um, keep a tight rein. I, let me back up. She's managed <laughs> to keep a tight rein on the budget and keep yeah. us focused. So that's, yeah. that's helpful. Yep. So what we are launching to do for income it's really kind of along three lines right we're buying two franchises we'll have a mapping business we'll have a travel agency business and we're going to do all that social media YouTube and Facebook and blogging and um, try to get that as monetized as possible so we're going to diversify our income and revenue streams um, and probably not make a ton of money from either one of them but hopefully the combined impact will allow us to defray the cost of traveling around and, and have some really great adventures. Agreed. I, uh, I'm a project manager slash software developer slash um, market trader. And you're working from the road. Yeah. She was going to take a month off and we were just going to go travel off our savings and then she'd find something. but. We were both blessed in the fact that both of our employers wound up keeping us. So we're, you know, we're lucky and it, it, it kind of hinders the, the travel part of it. You know, we have to, we have to really plan around it and travel only on weekends, which is when we would normally want to go out and explore. Um, but, but we, you know, we still get to make a paycheck and, and have benefits and. Yeah. I mean, it, Daniel's suggestion, I have the people out there that are looking at this lifestyle and do have some debt or if they need to be able to work and have a steady income is that you have to think outside the box, not just at your 
your title or what you do because there are so many jobs out there and so many other positions that you could do with your skill set. When I went in and gave my notice, um, I had to really sell it to my boss who thought this was a vacation or um, we were just going to retire and loudly gag around. I don't know, but I had to sell it to her. Um, to say this is a lifestyle, we are still going to be working our 40 hours, we're dedicated, and um, before you know it, they came back to me three days and offered me the remote job. The biggest advice I could give is that, like you said about selling yourself, is to look at it as almost like a job interview that you need to go in and sell yourself. You need to go in and You're sell the idea and think ahead how you could make remote work if it were to be with your your current employer there may be something different that you can do with them that would work remotely and working remote even though we are traveling because we have to work full-time both of us our traveling revolves around that and it's a beautiful thing because then we travel how we need to travel with our lifestyle and with working so we don't move as frequent so right now we're living up savings. We, for several years before hitting the road, we saved money. We lived in California. We did not buy the expensive California home. Um, and uh, we are starting a business. We are treating it as a startup. We are giving ourselves a one year runway to figure out uh, what's going to be. Is it going to be blog, YouTube, maybe eBooks, maybe products or something like that. We are um, kind of giving ourselves time to figure out what works for us and what other people um, find useful. For me, I think I used to work in product management, and so I really want to use this first year or so on the road to really understand the, the community and the people and some of the products that we're working with. And it's great when we turn up to events and rallies and things when the manufacturers are there. And I think they're really starting now to listen to consumers. And so for me, I think I want to, to really understand that as well and see if there's some opportunities there for, for us to help out. I work for a company and I do accounting. So I'm hoping that um, I don't necessarily want to do that on the road because I've been doing that for years, but I'm hoping to find something that I can do on the road once I go full time. For income, I have a pretty good military pension. Lisa does some uh, contractor work. Yeah, and um, I'm a, a blogger and a content creator for a couple different uh, RV related companies. And we also uh, monetize on our own blog. For income, we uh, have our own budget lines established. I'm retired now, so. I am too. And we've we've got a steady income coming in from our retirement resources and our finances mm -hmm. that we've saved in investments. Mm -hmm. That's it. Plus we also uh, did extra on it. We wanted to make sure that we were totally padded and make sure we were gonna be okay. And so we've got extra Roth IRAs and, and traditional IRAs and stuff like that. So I'm thinking we're gonna be okay. So I hope you've gotten a little bit of insight on what some people do to support themselves on the road. You know, there's more out there than just being retired. So if you're not at retirement age, there are many, many different jobs and many types of jobs that you can do, even if it's something that you're not currently doing right now. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what makes this full-time adventure pretty neat. I mean, we've talked to people, and as you've seen in the video, that are doing all kinds of things. This yeah. is just a, I mean, a small snippet yep. of what you can do all on the road. To support yourself. Yeah. Everything from work camping to temp jobs to remote jobs. There are so many remote jobs out there that you're not aware of that you can, that you can find and do. It, it's crazy what's out there. Yeah. And the, and the, the real nice thing is you don't have to be connected 24-7. Yeah. For some of uh, those jobs. For some of those jobs yeah. where you have to punch in and you're on the clock and you, I mean, you could really just find a decent job that requires mm -hmm. connectivity yep. um, and stay, stay working that way. Yep. And, and more and more companies are going to remote workers because it's cheaper for them. And really, if you look at all the data, remote workers are way more productive than workers in an office. Right. I know when I first started my remote work job, I was literally putting in more hours than I thought I would just because I had the time, less distractions, yeah. and I felt more obligated to prove that I could do this, that it would, that it would work yeah. for the company and for myself. Yep. 
trust us, it can be done. We're seeing it yeah. firsthand out here on the road. From many people in many different jobs, yeah. many different companies. Yeah. So I hope this answered the question a little bit. I am hoping to put together another video with very specifics on how to's as far as um, working remotely and getting jobs remotely that is in the works um, but until then be sure and hit that subscribe button give us a thumbs up and hit the notification bell and know there are more videos in this series coming this is just the beginning yeah. so make sure you subscribe so you can get the whole series and if you missed our first video Go back and watch it because this whole series is pretty interesting. You want to get all the answers. Yep. And until then, we will see you on, on the, the road. road. Welcome back to the second video in our series of full time. Uh, that's not it. Take I'm not, three. I'm not. Stop shifting all over, dude. <laughs> I'm rocking her. It's Stop. like I'm holding it's a, like baby. a baby. What are you doing? Yeah. So. Wait. Actually, pause. Because it's going to be a different spot. I thought we were pausing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, did I? I don't even remiss, remember pushing record. Oh, are yeah, you shitting me? I was. <laughs> like, that's some of my best stuff, but I'm not even feeling good. <laughs> Welcome back to our second video. Oh. <clears throat> Got some voice issues happening? Yeah. Okay.